Hi class, um, welcome to um, political science research methods. Um, I apologize for not being able to be with you the first um, couple days of the class and I really appreciate um, the, the kind comments um, that, that some of you sent my way um, and, and I appreciate all of your uh, understanding um, during a time that's been pretty difficult um, for, for my family. Um, so today, I, I wanted to go over the basics of the course as well as um, the reason why I think studying um, political science research methods is um, important and something that's worth, um, worth value. Okay. Um, first of all, I'll just introduce myself to those of you who uh, don't know me. Um, my name is Dr. Michael Artime. Um, this is my, um, let's see, my third year at PLU now um, yeah so um, have been uh, have been here for for a little while um, and uh, my wife also started teaching at the same time that I did here at PLU um, her name is Dr. Tiffany our time um, and um, you can see her in the picture here um, with our daughter uh, Louise who is about 11 months old um, in a couple days um, and uh, you can picture you can see her uh, in, in the other picture with uh, my dog uh, Warner who is a big uh, labradoodle um, and she likes to uh, stand on him uh, rest on him, um, stick her hand in his mouth and pull on his teeth and his tongue. Um, so we have been uh, really enjoying our time together uh, as, as a family over the summer. Um, I'm also anxious to get to know um, you as well. Um, and, and I'll talk about this at the end here, but I'm also going to send you um, information about um, a Google Hangout um, tomorrow afternoon um, between three and four o'clock. And I'm gonna ask that each of you um, you know, take a moment during that time period to share a little bit about yourself. Um, and um, you can use that opportunity to ask me any questions that you have about the course. Um, and, um, and I'll be there in, in real time and able to respond to you. So let me talk about some of the topics that we'll be covering here in the course. Um, we're going to be talking about the basics of, of research, um, the, the, the sort of building blocks of, of doing research in political science. Um, then we'll turn to, um, to actually engaging in research. In, in particular, we'll spend a lot of time um, learning different um, types of statistical analysis. So um, in this second part of the course, we'll be looking at some basic techniques um, in statistical analysis. Um, that portion of the course will culminate in a project that I'll explain in, in more detail uh, later on in the course. This is going to be um, a project which you can complete independently or um, you can complete as part of a small group. Um, then once that project is completed and you've presented that to the class, we'll have um, you know, a sort of crash course in advanced um, statistical techniques. Um, and that will also culminate in, in a project and that, that'll be the second project in the course and then the final um, assignment that you'll have to complete before the end of the semester. Okay, so um, one of the big questions um, is, uh, you know, about the discipline. So we, we call ourselves political science, but we don't often think about um, whether or not um, what we do is is truly scientific or not. Um, and and the argument, um, at least for people inside the discipline, is yes, we, we, are, um, we are a type of science. We are, we're a type of science because um, th the same way that um, the, the life sciences, the natural sciences, uh, make use of the scientific method, we also make use of the scientific method in, um, in our discipline. And so um, I'll talk to you in class, we'll, we'll have um, some time here at the beginning of the course where I talk about why what we do is is scientific. Um, and so um, th there are some there's some big questions in terms of um, what is the state of research um, in the discipline? Um, and so um, we we tend to, at least in American politics, rely a lot on quantitative analysis. So sort of crunching the numbers as it relates to different political trends in the United States. Well, um, one of the questions is, does that make the discipline um, inaccessible to, to outsiders? Does it mean that 
um, people who might otherwise be interested in some of the things that we have to say um, can't understand what it is that, that we find. Um, also, um, you know, if we choose to abandon quantitative analysis and we use um, more, um, more qualitative approaches, um, is, is that somehow um, less rigorous? And, and I would argue that it's not, and we'll talk about that um, in class. Um, finally, um, do we shy away from, from big questions when we look at um, statistical analysis? Um, and, and that is something that, that I'll touch on um, as we go throughout the course, because most research papers are dealing with a very narrow question as it relates to politics in the United States. Um, you're not trying to answer, um, does democracy work or not um, in, in the types of research that you do um, in a quantitative way. Um, and, and so one of the things that, that we'll learn in this course is that um, asking those small questions helps us bit by bit, piece by piece, understand some of these, some of these bigger questions. So I wanted to give you um, an example of a, um, a type of political science that I think has been um, that has been important, demonstrating um, hopefully that there's value in what we do. Um, so one of the questions that's been asked for a long period of time is what is political ideology and why is it important? Um, one of the, the key figures in analyzing that within our discipline is Philip Converse. Um, Philip Converse um, made the argument that political elites, um, those who are knowledgeable and engaged in politics, are more likely to organize their world um, in an ideological sense. So they're more likely to understand politics in terms of a liberal and conservative spectrum. Um, he used uh, the American National Election Studies data set, a data set which we'll be using in this course and which has been used um, since um, the 1950s um, in the discipline. Um, and so his initial research was done using the 1956, 1958, and 1960 um, panel studies that were done by the American National Election Studies data set. Um, this data set asks a series of open-ended questions about parties, um, and candidates in American politics. And what he found was that essentially people could be divided into five categories. There were ideologues, which were the people that were, um, were most knowledgeable about politics. They understood what the terms liberal and conservative meant, and they, um, they could organize issues and ideas um, along that spectrum. There are near ideologues, which are you know, sort of second best, according to Converse. Um, they, they know the terms liberal and conservative, but they don't always apply them um, accurately. Um, there are uh, group interests or people that would be defined as um, interested in the outcomes of, of their own group. Um, and, and, and so, for example, you know, if you are a, if you're a teacher, um, what you might be most concerned with is how politicians address issues which are directly related to your field. So, you know, where do, where do politicians stand on questions of um, teacher unions, for example, might be of, of particular concern to you. And if that's the case and you organize your thinking about politics um, in that way, then you would, you would be part of this category. Um, there are also nature of the times. Um, Individuals, these are people that evaluate politics based on what is currently happening and not necessarily long-term trends. And, you know, his, his argument is, is the worst of all is this no issue content voter. These are the people that he argues essentially don't know anything uh, about politics and don't care about the, the political world. Um, as you can see, according to Converse's analysis, uh, most people, uh, at least the plurality of people, um, can be situated in this group interest category. Um, uh, some scholars revisited this analysis um, in, in uh, you know, in 2000, and what they found was, you know, a, a pretty, you know, pretty striking um, results in many ways, very similar to um, what Converse had found in the past. Um, however, what you notice is that there are both more people who um, are in the ideologue category. So more people who know about politics and can organize political thinking on an ideological spectrum than, um, than existed in 1956. But there are also more people in the no issue content category. And so 
Um, this is consistent with other findings in political science, which demonstrate that there's a growing gap between those who know about politics and those um, that don't. That if you want to know about politics, you can know everything there is to know about it, especially considering our access to, to lots of um, information via technology. Um, but if you don't want to know about politics, there are a lot of other things that you can consume your time with. And so his conclusions are the public does not necessarily think about political parties and candidates um, ideologically. It's the, 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 the large minority um, don't think about politics on those, on those terms. Um, also, the, the recognition and correct use of the terms liberal and conservative is, is actually quite rare. Um, that constraint across a variety of issue positions is, is rather low, meaning that um, you would think that people, you know, would have pretty consistent, but, you know, so if you were against, you know, if you didn't believe that the government um, had as large a role in, in policy making um, as, as it should, then that should dictate how you think about a variety of issues. Um, what he found was that that wasn't true. People were sort of all over the map in terms of their, their um, issue positions. Um, additionally, attitude consistency over time is low. So you could ask somebody their opinion about an issue one day, and if you ask them a period of time later, they might give you a very different answer. Um, so ultimately, it's a fairly pessimistic look at how people think about politics. And so I'd encourage you to think about, you know, how you would describe the American voter. How do you know that you're correct? And to what degree are you certain of, of your assessment? Political science is helping us answer some of these, some of these questions. Um, without political science, we only address these issues in very anecdotal ways. Um, and, and I would argue that that's, that's, you know, not a very effective way of addressing these big picture questions as they relate to American politics. Um, additionally, um, you know, Congress was part of a team of researchers who helped us understand how people arrived at their political beliefs um, in general. So um, he argued, as well as um, some other scholars that he worked with, that there was a funnel of causality, um, essentially, you know, a process by which we arrive at um, our political beliefs. This is a very complicated look at the funnel of causality. Here's a much simpler one that I created. It, it's called the Sharknado of causality. So essentially, um, we start um, identifying our political beliefs when we are young. Um, we often get those political beliefs from our parents or those around us. Um, over time, we develop a psychological attachment to the party. Um, and that, that psychological attachment to the party influences the way that we um, evaluate candidates' issues, um, foreign and domestic policy. And as a consequence, that dictates our vote choice. Okay. Um, what, what you can see through this is that because our political beliefs are so, um, are so influenced by, um, by those around us and by our own psychological attachment to the party, um, it's very difficult for um, party affiliation or ideological beliefs to be, to be swayed, for them to change. So I, I wanted to give you a, you know, a brief description of, of a type of research to demonstrate to you that political science has a lot to say about some of these issues, not just in terms of how we decide who to vote for and who not to vote for, but also in terms of the way that the institutions of government operate. And so it's important that we do this work well. And I, I hope that we can kind of find ways to do that during, during this semester and that, that over time you begin to feel comfortable engaging in that type of analysis, which um, really empowers us as we learn more um, about how American politics works. Um, as I mentioned, um, I'm going to be sending you some information um, via email um, about the Google Hangout. Um, you, you should go there, you should introduce yourself, and you should make sure to ask me any questions that you have. Um, I'll be returning on Wednesday, so we'll have class as, as normal then. Um, and and um, don't worry, I'll make sure that we, we catch up on all the content um, that we've missed in the last few days. Again, I really appreciate um, both your support and your understanding um, during this time. Have a great day.